Yvonne Howard Lewis. The Howard Lewis and Dean, we've all in a group, they'll go with Ardal, Edusuru, and Pro to Selly. We've been Marv and Oil, Proud, Uncle, Hen Uncle, Farmer, Sector, Mechanic, Canoe or Canaeon Lad, Come a dog a friend da and ye bear a honour a mother you a mechabara. Howard was undoubtedly a one off. A rural character that once met was never forgotten. In his near eighty years he was a dear son, a brother, an uncle, a great uncle, a farmer, a craftsman, a mechanic, a singer of songs, a neighbour and a good friend to many of you here today. Howard was born in the family farm at Karen Yan in 1942 and passed away suddenly but peacefully in that very same house on Thursday 14th of April. He was the firstborn child and only son to John Reese and Sarah Ann Lewis and a brother to our late Aunt Eleanor and to Enid. Howard had a sickly childhood, never in the best of health, and was looked after by his mother and grandmother Martha who doted on him and on whom he doted in return. In school, Howard's best friend was Elbert Griffiths, now in Germany. And in his YFC days, Glyn Snape was a very good friend. And it was a big loss to Howard when Glyn died at such a young age. But his memory lived on because the family gave Howard Glyn's factor. The family unit would never be the same again after Sarah Ann, their mother, passed away suddenly at the Easter of 1964. But the family moved on, and Howard would increasingly take the reins farming the land at Caribbean. Now it's fair to say that Howard was not necessarily a natural farmer. He <coughs> no doubt told many of you, his friends here present today, as he often told us, his nearest family, that he felt an obligation as the only son on a farm that had been in the same family for over a century since 1849, to continue the line. But his heart was never really in it. Howard preferred four wheels to four legs. And with the onset of modern milking practices, he retired the milking herd of Caribbean in the early 1980s and he went arable, giving him more time to concentrate on his beloved machinery. Howard enjoyed following the ploughing matches with his father. They regularly went to the British ploughing match and followed almost all the Welsh local ploughing matches as well. And Carnian would host many of its own after 1992. When his father, our family patriarch, John Lewis Lewis, passed away peacefully in 1991, the family had a dilemma. To keep his child horses and to preserve the memory of an old way of living in the countryside would not come cheaply. So Enid and our late father Lance decided to diversify and open to the public to raise the extra income to keep the family tradition alive and living on the farm. Howard and Eleanor were in the background, but their support for their sister's venture should not go underestimated. This was their home, <coughs> after all. Had they decided against the concept of inviting perfect strangers to visit their family farm on a regular basis, it would never have worked and Hugh and the family would not be here running the farm 30 years later. Indeed, when Lance passed away, Howard, for the best part of 15 years, willingly drove the tractor trailer ride around his farm, no doubt escorting thousands of visitors around the fields of his fathers in that time. If I was leading a talk, I'd always ask the visitors at the end of each tour to give Uncle Howard a round of applause for his effort. You always Wave back from the cows. He loved it. He lived with his sister Eleanor in the house of Camillan their entire life up to near her own passing in 2011. It was at about this time that Hugh added the campsite to the farm attraction. Again, Howard could easily have taken against the idea of having perfect strangers staying on his farm overnight within 100 yards of the house. But he didn't. He actually enjoyed the sounds of a boil that he would hear from across the way during those warmer months made by families enjoying their time on the farm. He enjoyed that company. He'd often ask me, I see the house on the campsite, how many are staying on the campsite this weekend? 
Not that in fear is that he hoped it would be quiet, but that he hoped it would be busy. When the autumn came and the farm and campsite closed for the season, and the darker, wetter nights drew in, it was indeed a sad time of the year for Howard. Howard was a quiet man, but he had a wealth of knowledge of the old ways of the countryside. He followed his father in learning the old crafts such as platting and rope work. Indeed, aged 23, Howard received a certificate of merit in being placed joint third in the National Demonstration of Craftwork in the 1966 Royal Welsh Show. He would also go on to represent Wales in craftwork in internationals both in Wales and in Scotland. Howard, of course, as we know, he loved his machinery. If anything needed welding on the farm, Howard would do it. In the 1970s, he was one of the founding members of the South West Wales Area Group of the National Vintage Tractor and Engine Club and was in their most recent meeting on the Monday before he passed away. Howard's love of big machines took him all over the country. He may have felt obligated to continue farming the land of Carnian, but that didn't stop him from exploring foreign fields, and the 1980s and 1990s were arguably his best decade. <coughs> Eleanor was in relatively good health at that time, and Howard could therefore travel the length and breadth of Wales and England doing contract work, and he made many lifelong friends as a result, including the likes of the Forsyth family, and especially Bill Howe in Warwickshire, Mike Sutton and family again in Warwickshire, David Skelton and family in Lincolnshire, Chris and Linda Sucklemore in Hampshire, and John and Georgina Shoelin, more locally in Bitton Farm, St. Ishbals. Howard had a particular affinity for Eastern England because it was flat and dry. He would often bemoan our own more rugged and wet landscape as being less conducive to farming but he always came home to County Yale. Indeed, Howard was obsessed with the weather. He used to record the rainfall each day and note it down in his records. It was probably only apt then that when Edna Sue made the national and indeed international news for its near record year, because you this is going, yes, for, for its near record-breaking daily run of wetness in early 2017, the striking image that made the Daily Mirror was of Howard in his Wellingtons, in a puddle at the entrance to Carnia, with the Pacelli Hills as the backdrop looking thoroughly, thoroughly miserable. <laughs> Cousin John Cumbetus mentioned online in the last week that that would be the abiding image of Howard who will stay with him, and I think many of us can attest to the same. Indeed, Paul's wife Marion reminded me that Howard was in the village that day, ready to be filmed for TV when a bigger news story broke and pushed Eglusuru onto the back burner. Indeed, it took the death of David Bowie to knock Howard off the airwaves. <laughs> Speaking of bad weather, Brother Paul couldn't help but laugh looking back at the sorry sight that placed him and Howard in 1993. Howard was always willing to help others out where possible, and when he asked if he could borrow Paul's new red 1.6 diesel Ford Escort to go to back in Carston, Paul happily obliged. Considering Howard's fanaticism towards all things meteorological, Howard, how Howard managed to make the blunder of us to follow alludes me to this day. Paul received a call from an anxious Howard from a cardigan telephone kiosk asking Pat Paul if he could come to the town with his wellies, the Land Rover, and the tow chain because the Ford Escort had got stuck. Paul arrived in town as requested to find his new pride and joy parked on the river edge of a key speed car park with the Muldown River flowing right through the middle of it. <laughs> it was the day of the great Muldown flood of 1993. Cool as you like, true to fall, but what an ounce, but as they would have to wait for the flow to subside, they may as well retreat to the Black Lion for lunch. Of course, Howard had no funds on him, so Paul had to pay. <laughs> Suffice to say, the water did subside, the car did start, and they were able to take it back to Carnia, where an afternoon was spent bailing out the content, contents of the Abba and leaving it to dry in the garage in time to go back inside to relive it all again on the six o'clock news. <laughs> Howard's greatest love, though, may not have been his machinery or indeed the weather. It may have been his music. He loved his country music at Howard, as did his sister Eleanor. And Lynn in Sunbergheim was a particular favourite of Howard's throughout his lifelong love of 
me was it. And they would often travel good distances to see the likes of Lynn, uh, and many others uh, sing live country and western. Howard County Yan was his stage name, and he often made a forceful lunge for the microphone whenever we were hosting a concert on the farm over the past 30 years and would regale us in his favourite songs, such as John Williams's Gypsy Woman, Nicole's Eurovision winner A Little Piece, or Richie Kavanagh's Mobile Phone. For many of you here today who experienced Howard live singing any one of these and more, you will attest, I'm sure, to what was an unforgettable experience. <laughs> Indeed, speaking to Dewey, a close friend of Howard, with whom he spoke every night, Dewey recalled the many wonderful trips they had to Ireland. Their last trip, only a few years ago, was to Wexford, where Howard ended up on stage singing live with Richie Kavanagh. No doubt one of the great moments in Howard's life. We will be playing a number of Howard's favourite country songs back on the farm, following this service for you to enjoy. On one occasion, Howard and good friend Gareth Jones Quarrell went to a music concert in Cardiff. Howard had parked his car when some policemen turned up and told him he'd better move it because it may not be there when he came back from the concert. Not to worry, Howard told the policeman. It would take another vehicle with a tow bar to move it, he said. How come? the policeman asked. Because I've got the gear stick in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> To which he ripped out his adjustable gear stick from inside his coat to the incredulity of a police officer who found Howard's own take on car safety a moment of great hilarity. <laughs> Only Howard. <laughs> it was 20 years ago in 2001 when Howard decided to host a birthday party in Fishcar for himself with his music as the backdrop. Nothing wrong with that. But imagine his sister Enid surprised when she turned up to find that he had sold it as being his 60th birthday party. It was 2001. Man knew very well that Howard was only 59. <laughs> <laughs> Howard had seemingly made a genuine error in his maths. But never fear, Howard had a plan. He celebrated his 60th birthday for a second time 12 months later. <laughs> as well as Dewey, Howard would like to keep in touch with many good friends. A number of you here today, I'm sure, would have spoken to Howard regularly, if not daily. Brian Brown in Wickland was one of those, and Howard was greatly saddened at the news of his passing only recently, and he also regularly spoke to Hugh Tarris over in Canada. Howard worried about himself, but he often worried about others. The last time I saw him in the house, just a few days before he passed away, he was telling me how concerned he was to hear that a good friend in Ekinsuru was in hospital at the time. It could often be said that Howard had a self-centred streak in him, but it could also be said that he cared a lot about those families around him, and it's fair to say that for all of us, the families of Hugh, Paul, Stephen, Anne and myself, life will never quite be the same without Uncle Howard in it. As a family, we want to say a special word of Dioch to a number of good friends who spent many, many years with Howard, helping on the farm throughout his life. In the earlier days, there was Jim Senior, then Tony Southern, and then latterly Colin Wilson, who worked on the farm for many, many years. Following Colin, Lynn Owens would help Howard of a family, and he's been a regular face of Karen Leanne for nigh on 30 years. When Hugh and I visited Lynn by the afternoon that Howard passed away with the news, Lynn said that Howard had been like a father figure to him. It's fitting that Howard today made the final journey from Karen Leanne to Bepabara with a grateful thanks to Alan Gramouth of Kadam and his sports and major. Driving the tractor today was Mark Evans, who also developed a close friendship with Howard in the last decade through their mutual love of machinery and membership of Kadam, of which, of which Howard was a keen supporter. And following this eulogy, Emil, on behalf of Kadam, uh, will uh, say a few words uh, on their behalf. Mark and Howard actually first met at Saturn Baron 2012, 10 years ago, tomorrow. Mark filmed Howard driving a tractor for what would turn out to be the last time only on the 1st of April spreading fertiliser. On the day before Howard passed away, he was out on the farm with Mark tinkering with the axle on the case. Mark told me that they had a good day. The sun was shining, the weather was warming up, and Easter was around the corner, and Howard was already planning on buying a new axle as his next project. It was a shock to us all then, family and friends, when Howard passed away without any warning in bed the next morning, prior to a scheduled Covid vaccination in Kunkoi. 
that he passed away in the house in which he was born, as he had always hoped would be the case. And looking back, speaking to Mark Evans, that final day on a Wednesday had been a particularly good and particularly productive day for Howard, who was on good form. There's no such thing as a good death, but Howard got as close to one as could ever be hoped. Like his father before him, he was alert right until the end. Now, Howard wasn't a big cat bell man, yet he had a very close affinity to Beffa Barra and was a very good financial supporter to the Achos. He often said lightheartedly that he may have been the only member whose annual contribution to the ministry here at Beffa Barra was worth more than the, than the value of his car. <laughs> if you ever saw Howard's car, you probably agree with him. <laughs> <laughs> he was very much aware that two sets of his great great grandparents, David and Lisa Thomas of Tiros, who had luckily moved to Pantagaon, and Thomas Picton Lisa of Mirianok, were at the forefront of the building of the first chapel here in 1826, and of developing the cause in the decades to follow, and generations of our family are buried here in the Manuel. So it is only fitting that Howard will be reunited with his sister Eleanor at the end of this service. Enid, Ma'am will miss Howard dearly. When you speak to someone, either in person or on the phone, every single day for the best part of 55 years and more, it is a wrench to know that the phone call will not call again and that voice will now remain silent. Ma'am would like to thank you all, as we all do as a family, for the kind words and sympathy offered over the recent weeks and for your presence here today for Howard. A special thanks to Harry and Eros, good neighbours to Howard, Reynas and Mark from Kadam, Dewey from Howard's Life of Music, <coughs> and Stuart Thomas from the South West Wales Area Group of the National Vintage Tractor and Engine Club for all being the bearers today. Your Christmas Eve. Howard would often say to me in latter years that he worried that people would forget him. I told him that no one could forget him, as he was unforgettable. <laughs> Your attendance today is testament to a life well lived and one that will be remembered. Hugh once called Howard on the phone as a joke and affected a strong English accent and asked him, can I speak to Big H, please? Howard's response, speaking. <laughs> <laughs> In life there is death and in death there is life and only this week we have had the great fortune of having two foals born on the farm. One last Saturday, one on Tuesday. Our supper punch, Dixie Pearl, gave birth to the first supper foal surely ever witnessed in the area. A wonderful looking cot last Saturday evening. Supper punches are a rare breed, and I'm sure we can all agree that Howard was a rare breed as well. <laughs> we as a family, therefore, very pleased to announce that Hugh has decided to name the cold foal <coughs> Big H in Howard's memory. You are all welcome to join us back at the farm following the service and burial for a funeral tea to listen to the music in our Happy Celt and to meet Big H in equine form. I finished with some words of music by misquoting Frank Sinatra. Howard lived a life that's full, he travelled each and every highway. But more, much more than this, how would it is this way? <laughs>